Hey guys, even here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with another physique update of Nick Walker, but this time around we also got an explanation or the answer basically to why he's staying so lean, is he preparing to do a show soon or what is the reason everybody is wondering, so Nick answers in the caption here, so he says that this photo is after the cardio and then he says... I keep getting asked, uh, why are you so lean post-show? And he says, was I supposed to get fat? It's called not eating everything at sight, sticking to a plan, being consistent, always prepared. I love my cheat meals, but in moderation, I still do cardio almost every morning, training four days a week right now, maximizing sleep and recovery. So, to answer Nick's question, is he supposed to just get fat? No, of course not. I mean, he's at a point right now where he really doesn't need to add a lot more muscle. He needs maybe to add some details, some quality, maybe muscle maturity, maybe some areas need to improve a little bit, but overall, he's more than massive enough. The most important thing for him is to maintain his waistline. And if he pushes the food too much in the off-season, chances are he's gonna make his midsection worse. And if he does that, then it's gonna hurt him more than a couple of pounds of muscle are gonna benefit him at this point. So I understand why he's not pushing the food and trying to grow as fast as possible. But still, staying this shredded for two months... I mean, I would understand him staying lean, but he's basically contest ready, still. I mean, look at the lower chest separation. You can count the fibers. I mean, he's shredded everywhere. His skin seems paper thin. So it's not just that he didn't get fat, but he basically stayed contest ready for two months after the Mr. Olympia. So the question is still why is he doing this? Even the guys who are doing the Arnold Classic officially did get a little bit chubby, a little bit watery. Maybe because they know they're gonna have to suffer again soon, so they wanna have a little break. And Nick thinks he's not going to, so he takes his time and it's easy for him to maintain this kind of condition. He probably doesn't really need to try too hard. Maybe he just eats normally, does his cardio and he stays like this without much effort. But I don't know, this shredded, this is a little bit too much. I don't think this is easy to maintain. Not just the conditioning, not just the body fat percent, but this hardness as well. This requires use of certain compounds, I'm sure. Anyways, as of right now, Nick still needs to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. If he doesn't have to qualify, he probably knows that already. If he is gonna get that special invite, they probably already told him, so he doesn't have to choose a show startup prep or whatever. So, you know, maybe, maybe he already got it, because if he was prepping for the Arnold or for the New York, he would probably lose this condition. I don't think he would stay this shredded for this long. So my guess is he has a special invite for the Mr. Olympia and as far as the Arnold, I don't think he decided yet. Maybe he's gonna maintain this kind of conditioning for a while and then he's gonna be like six weeks out, four weeks out and if he still looks like this or something similar to this and he's a couple of weeks out of Arnold Classic, why wouldn't he try and win those $300,000? Personally, I believe he's staying in shape because he enjoys it, because he loves being shredded and it's not that difficult for him. So once again, if he stays like this long enough and he feels like he can do some serious damage at the Arnold Classic and based on the way he looks like, based on his physique updates, he can win that show. He can win that show. Why not be two times Arnold Classic champion? He's already basically shredded. 10 weeks is gonna pass really quickly. Maybe he's gonna maintain the same level of conditioning. So he might jump in. I think the chances of Nick jumping into the Arnold Classic are really, really high. And if he wins it, he doesn't need a special invite. So I think this makes sense. We'll see. But I'm betting on Nick Walker jumping into the Arnold Classic. What do you guys think? Nick's biggest competition at the Arnold Classic will be Samson Dowd and Harry Chopin. But there is this guy that is basically a wild card that a lot of people are saying is the new Ronnie Coleman, the most massive bodybuilder of today. And it is Rubiel Mosquera, aka Nexilla. And here is a physique update of this guy 10 weeks out. Yeah, this is recent. It's a side chest pose. It's not the best angle, but still you can see what is going on. You can see the conditioning. And at 10 weeks out, this guy's conditioning is definitely comparable to Nick Walker's current conditioning. 
these guys are probably at a very similar body fat percent. From what I heard, uh, Nixilla is not really a big eater, so maintaining his conditioning is probably gonna be an easy thing for him to do, and since he competed recently, he probably won't go off the gear. He has only like 12 weeks between these two shows, so there is no time to reset, to work on his health, stuff like that, to recover. He's going from one show to another, Arnold Classic is his next show, and this guy can be a big surprise, and I don't know, can this guy battle Nick Walker? Well, in terms of a freak factor, these both guys got it, like, they are really big, really massive, they have some standout freaky body parts, as far as conditioning, Nick is definitely a level ahead, and as far as the symmetry, the balance, the proportions, you know, the shape, the, the, the completeness, stuff like that, I think Nick is a lot ahead of Rubiel right now. I don't know if that's gonna be the case in a couple of years, when uh, Rubiel's physique finally matures completely, he improves a couple of body parts, and he gets super shredded, and he shows a lot of details in certain areas. I think this guy like has the tools to be one of the best bodybuilders in the world. And as far as the Arnold Classic, I believe he's going to be better. I think he's going to be more conditioned. I don't think he's going to be much bigger or like more balanced and stuff like that. But I think he's going to be more shredded. And with all the muscle that he has at this point, with all the freak factor, simply with the physique that he's got right now, I, I definitely can see him in the top five. We're in the top five. Well, almost anything is possible. I mean, I don't see him winning or placing in the top two against Hardy or Samson. But, you know, I can see him as high as third spot. And if Nick jumps in, then one spot lower. But, I don't know. Anything is possible, really. This guy is a wild card for sure. Alright, next we got another physique update of Samson Dauda at 10.5 weeks out of the Arnold. And in this video... We can see that Samson lost some of that water that he was holding in his previous physique update, so he didn't gain any body fat, really. He just gained some water that he got rid of, and now, when you can see exactly what he's working with, it looks damn good. It looks really freaking big, really thick. And guys, please, do not forget, this guy is like 6 foot. Almost 6 foot. He's a taller bodybuilder. He's not like these guys like Nick Walker, like Hari Chopin. He's much, much taller than them. And look at his thickness right now. In these side poses and, and the front and the back poses. And look at the glutes right here. So once again, it seems like Samson is gonna be definitely a much improved version of his 2023 Mr. Olympia. Eddie Arnold Classic. I think he's gonna be much better. And that's why I still have him beating Hari Chopin at that show. Because it's insane how fast this guy is progressing. Like, for the past couple of years, he just kept getting better and better and bigger and thicker. I mean, at the Mr. Olympia, he wasn't super peeled. He was really conditioned for the Prague Pro and Romania. So, I'm predicting, once again, him winning the Arnold Classic by coming in improved, you know, bigger with more muscle. But actually in a good condition. No, I'm not saying super shredded, super peeled. I don't think Milo Sarce would go for that. I mean, they are going for fullness with a little bit worse conditioning, because that's what they are awarding in the IFBB. Sure, you need to be pretty conditioned, but not super dry. And if Samson wanted to come in super, super shredded, peeled, he could do that. I'm sure he could do that, but he would lose some of his size and fullness, and it wouldn't really work in his favor. The judges in the IFBB, once again, are looking for that fullness and roundness. They're not really awarding super dry conditioning that much. So I'm not expecting Samson to come in super peeled, even though I would love to see him that way. I know that's probably not going to happen. We're probably going to see him, you know, best case scenario, the, the way he was at the Arnold Classic as far as conditioning. And I think he's going to be a little bit improved muscularity-wise, a little bit bigger. And is it going to be enough to win this show? In my opinion, yeah. But whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, and finally we got a physique update of Regan Grimes, who is over that 300 pound mark. Finally, he actually broke the 300 and he got to 305 pounds, 
which I believe is the heaviest he has ever been. So Miloš Rače posted a bunch of photos and they're basically all uh, different variations of most muscular. I picked one and we can see exactly what is happening with his physique. So as you can see, he is still very, very lean. I mean, look at the quads, look at the midsection, look at the chest separation. So he is still pretty much shredded at 305 pounds. And I don't think he was ever this round, this full. I mean, I'm sure he's on a bunch of insulin and a lot of sugar and a lot of supplements of all kinds. So he, he blew up. And if he started dieting right now, I don't think he would be that much bigger at the end of the process. But if they keep it at this pace, in a couple of months, Regan is going to be like 320, 330. So, you know, if he actually packs those pounds and he doesn't ruin his lines, his midsection, this guy is going to be one of the top guys, maybe even next year, maybe as soon as next year. I mean, he was ninth at the Mr. Olympia. So how impossible, how crazy is it for him to leap forward, let's say, four spots? I mean, is that really that crazy? I mean, if he skips four spots, he's top five in the world. And four spots, it's not really that much. I mean, our guys like Hunter Labrada, uh, Brandon Curry, Andrew Jack, Michal Krizo, are all these guys going to make the same amount of progress like Regan? I don't think so. I don't think they're that young. I don't think they're that driven. I think Regan is going to make a lot of progress. How much progress? We'll see. I mean, you know, skipping those four spots. And there is also Nick Walker who will be there next year. He needs to skip five guys in order to be in the top five. So... It's a tall order, for sure, but, you know, at this pace, if he keeps it up like this, he can be one of the top guys. He has a really perfect structure for it. Right now, as you can see, his upper body in these poses is super full, super round, very complete. Legs seems to be the body part that he needs to improve the most. But again, at this pace, he's going to improve everything. And eventually, at the Mr. Olympia 2024, I mean, where is the limit for this guy? What can we expect of him? You guys tell me in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for more bodybuilding stuff like this. Guys, please subscribe. Thank you so much. See you soon, guys. All the best and bye-bye.